Hey, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. In my job as editor, I get a lot of submissions and I spend a good chunk of time reading them and making a determination of whether or not they should be considered for publication in the magazine. One of those submissions came in recently, and it is about uh, a member of the 53rd Ohio Infantry. His name is Ephraim C. Dawes, the brother of Rufus Dawes, who is a name that may be known to some of you. Uh, he was uh, an officer in the 6th Wisconsin Infantry, the famed 6th Wisconsin with the Iron Brigade. So Brother Ephraim, the story about him was submitted, and as I normally do as part of my job, I will do some basic fact-checking and a little poking around the internet to make sure that the information contained in the article is accurate and correct and all that good stuff. So as I was going through and doing some checking on Ephraim Dawes, I found that he was quite a prolific writer during the post-war period, dedicated a significant period of his life to not only collecting primary resources, including books and pamphlets and all that stuff, original manuscripts. He also wrote a lot about the war. Uh, and in that group of writings, I found a sketch, an essay that he wrote called My First Day Under Fire at Shiloh. It's not a document that I had seen before, and it was preserved by a group called the Military Order of the Loyal Legion of the United States. It's known nowadays as Mollus and the Mollus Collection. They, those guys did amazing work to preserve all of these accounts from the Civil War period written by the veterans, and Dawes's work is in there. So I want to set up this particular passage that I want to read to you today. Again, it's about Shiloh, that first day. So we're going back to uh, before dawn on April 6th. The colonel of Dawes's 53rd Ohio, Jesse J. Appler, had advanced his Buckeye boys to investigate the sounds of gunfire coming from their front. Dawes at the time was the regimental adjutant, and he was carrying out Appler's orders. So Appler, the colonel, is behind his regiment towards the center, and he's giving orders that are delivered by Dawes, who is the regimental adjutant with the rank of first lieutenant, and Dawes is up towards the front of the line. So as the Buckeye boys are advancing, the sun begins to rise, and what they see is absolutely frightening. A long line of skirmishers, well-organized, men in butternut. These are skirmishers from the Confederate Army. So this is where the setup ends and the passage begins. And here it is, an eyewitness account of the early morning hours as the sun is rising, and this is where you're going to find out about General William T. Sherman, who is pictured right here. So here we go. Quote, the sun had arisen in a clear sky and the bright gun barrels of the advancing line, that's the Confederates, shone through the green leaves. Dawes is now speaking or continues his narrative. I gave the command front left dress and hastening to Colonel Appler, who was in the rear of the center of the regiment, said in a low tone, Colonel, look to the right. Colonel Appler looked up and, with an exclamation of astonishment, said, This is no place for us, and then commanded, Battalion, about face, right wheel. Appler had seen the enemy, and it scared the heck out of him. Dawes continues his narrative. At this time, about 6.45 a.m., the tents were standing, the sick were still in the camps, the sentinels were pacing their beats, the officers, servants, and company cooks were preparing breakfast. The details for brigade guard and fatigue duty were marching to their posts, and in our regiment, the sutler shop was open. All of this was going on 
while Dawes and Appler and the men are out there facing the Confederates. So let me take you back to Dawes. This order, the order of Appler, brought the regiment back through its camp. Colonel Appler, marching in front, cried out a number of times in the loudest tones of his shrill, clear voice, sick men to the rear. It is needless to add that they obeyed. The regiment halted at the brow of the elevation in rear of the officers' tents, marched 10 paces forward, faced about, and the men lay down in the brush where the ground began to slope the other way. While the men were marching back through the camp, the Confederate skirmishers fired upon them. No one was hit, and there was no confusion. Two pieces of artillery of Waterhouse's battery took position on the right of the regiment as it halted, and General Sherman and staff rode along its front, stopping a few paces in front of the 6th Company. So I'm going to pause you here because now we have Confederates are moving in rather quickly and rather closely. You've got the men of the 53rd who have laid down to form a line so they can tackle these oncoming Confederates. You have all the sick men, the company cooks, the sutler have all abandoned camp. And now you've got Sherman and his officers riding out where the 53rd is and where the Confederates are advancing. So I want to get back into this. We're picking up on Dawes's narrative. Quote, Captain Jones, Lieutenant Starkey, and myself stood on the high ground in front of Company A. General Sherman, with his glass, was looking along the prolongation of the line of the regiment at the troops marching across the end of the Ree field and did not notice the line on his right. That's the Confederates. Lieutenant Eustace H. Ball of Company E of our regiment had risen from a sickbed when he heard Colonel Appler's command and was walking along in front of the line of his company. I saw the Confederate skirmishers emerge from the brush, which fringed the little stream in front of the regiment's camp, halt, and raise their guns. I called to him, Ball, Sherman will be shot. Ball then ran toward the general, crying out, General, look to your right. General Sherman dropped his glass and looking to the right, saw the advancing line of Hardee's corps, that's the Confederates under General Hardee, threw up his hand, Sherman threw up his hand and exclaimed, my God, we are attacked. The skirmishers fired and orderly fell dead by the general's side. Wheeling his horse, Sherman galloped back, calling to Colonel Appler as he passed him, Appler, hold your position, I will support you. The passage concludes with this paragraph. The view from the high ground where I stood at this time was one never to be forgotten. In front were the steadily advancing lines of Hardee's Confederates marching in perfect order and extending until lost to sight at the timber on either flank. In an open space in the Corinth Road, a battery was unlimbering directly in front of the spot where General Sherman's orderly lay dead there was a group of mounted officers. Wow, what an interesting and unique firsthand account of Sherman coming under fire uh, at Shiloh around 6.45, 7 o'clock a.m. on April 6th, 1862. This, an eyewitness account written by Ephraim Dawes of the 53rd Ohio Infantry. I hope you found this passage as fascinating as I did. I invite you to tune in to the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Take care.